0.9% sodium chloride or saline, sometimes called normal saline, is composed, it's simple, it's composed of water and table salt. And the amount of salt that's in there, sodium chloride, the amount of chloride in there in particular is about 50% more than is in human plasma. And in contrast, balanced fluids like lactated ringers or plasmolite A or normosol all are designed to have an electrolyte composition, including a chloride level that's much closer to that of human plasma. Our study compared balanced fluids with 0.9% sodium chloride uh, for critically ill adults and found that use of balanced fluids rather than saline resulted in a lower rate of death new renal replacement therapy or persistent renal dysfunction. So the administration of intravenous fluid is the most common intervention received by hospitalized patients and so the implications for this study are pretty broad that these two fluids, balanced fluids and saline, have been used for decades and it's not been known whether there was any difference between them for patient outcomes. The fluids are nearly equivalent in cost and so we think these findings of better outcomes with balanced fluid as opposed to saline, likely mean that transitioning toward balanced fluids will have a benefit for patients across a wide range of uh, diseases and severity of illness and across a wide range of settings. There are over 5 million critically ill adults admitted to intensive care units across the United States each year, the vast majority, 80-90% of whom receive some volume of intravenous fluid. And so these findings, because our study was so broad, likely apply to almost all of those patients, or the vast majority of those patients. What we saw in our study was that for every 100 patients treated with balanced crystalloids or balanced fluids instead of saline, one patient avoided death new renal replacement therapy or persistent renal dysfunction. And so when those numbers would be applied to 5 million critically ill adults and probably also to patients in other parts of the hospital, we're talking about potentially tens of thousands of patients who are spared death, new renal replacement therapy or renal dysfunction each year in the United States alone.